What happened in the world of crypto this week? Well, here to talk with me about that is Peter Gantner at Noble Dracon. Gentlemen, welcome. Hey, Robert. How are you? Good to see you, all, Robert. All good at this end. Um, um, but I'm eager, as I am most weeks, to learn what happened in the world of crypto. But first, uh, Noble, um, you're new to our program, and I'd love for you to give a little explainer of, for the benefit of folks who may not be familiar with you and your work, uh, you know, a little intro. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I appreciate you having me on the show, Robert. I, my name is Noble Dracone. I've written several books on investing, uh, winning the trading game and trade like a pro uh, for almost 30 years. I was one of the lead uh, educators, traders, uh, hedge fund operators and futures, forex and options trading. And about uh, four and a half years ago, I retired from the industry and started my pathway onto crypto and NFTs. And we created the first patent on combining augmented reality with physical merchandise, as well as crypto NFTs. And at the time, nobody really knew what I was talking about, non-fungible tokens, and they'd seen crypto kitties, and they couldn't figure out how to combine that with AR. And that journey has led us to a really great place in which my investment experience for the last uh, three decades has kind of made us intersect and create an NFT that allows people to stake and have access to music royalties as if they were Sony or BMG or Universal. And so we really created a unique opportunity to really educate people on how royalties work, how the music industry really works, and giving basically fans the opportunity to go from being fans to music moguls. And so we've had a really exciting run. Uh, we sold our top three NFTs for over $200,000 uh, in the last 30 days. We've done over a million dollars in NFT sales. Uh, and we're on the verge of creating an NFT platform just for musicians to be able to introduce uh, their products, their themselves, and uh, their royalties to the world. So uh, it's, it's a really exciting time. And I love that crypto allows us to be disruptive. Yeah. So maybe do a deeper dive on NFTs with respect to uh, royalties. I think some folks might be familiar with NFTs and images, but maybe less so with uh, NFTs and, uh, and I guess, audio. Would it be fair to say? I mean, Kings of Lion, they sold over $2 million worth of records. I think people kind of got it. They figured it out that NFTs are really the idea uh, around chain of custody and be able to own something that's digital. More and more for the last uh, 20 years, everything has gone digital, but you don't really own your digital life. You don't even own yourself, right? Facebook has been reselling and selling your information all across the web. And so non-fungible tokens allow us to concentrate digital information and then put a chain of custody to it, meaning that if I give this NFT to you, Robert, all of a sudden it proves that you own it because it's in your wallet and it's gone ahead on the DLT and the distributed ledger technology. A million other people agree that I gave this to you. And so what we did was we looked at the landscape for royalties and for the most part has been inefficient. You know, they're still functioning on terms and ideas that they started back in the 20s and 30s when recorded music became popular. And so we, we said, look, if we have a non-fungible token and our company aggregates the royalties, why not give people an opportunity to not just have an NFT that will appreciate in value or is pretty to look at, why not let it do something, give it a DeFi opportunity? And so people can uh, and will in, in the next probably 30, 45 days be able to what we call stake their NFTs with us and share in part of the royalty revenues. They don't own it but they get a chance to share in the royalty revenues. And in the future, uh, not too distant future, people will be able to take those same NFTs and be able to swap them out for music royalties on specific songs. Yeah, so some of the um, uh, performers that are involved in this at the moment, can you share some of the names? Uh, are they household names? You know what, we don't, so we don't have any performers involved. So one of the things that people really don't understand is that music royalties are bought like baseball cards that people have been trading them and swapping them in major companies. And so what we did is we went out and bought actual music catalogs. Now there's some great performers in those music catalogs. We've got songs from Justin Timberlake. We got songs from Jay-Z. We have a, a song from Beyonce, a song from Cher, but the songs themselves have a specific sliver of what the royalties are and that's performance rights. So every time the song is played on TV, every time it's played on YouTube, we get a check. The beauty of that is we don't have to go out and negotiate a direct deal with Timbaland, who's got songs on our uh, Will I Am. 
we own the we own the royalties to the song and that's the secret sauce behind the entire music industry is that the songs themselves have other uh, performers and artists attached to it that are not just the people we see there's the writers there's some producers and every single one of these people are receiving royalties but they're not as famous and they're not getting endorsement deals and so they're stuck on this small cycle of receiving these certain set of uh, royalties over their lifetime, but yet their bills may not match up or their lifestyle may not match up to the way the royalties are coming in. And so companies like ours for years have gone in, stepped in and bought royalties, lent against them, uh, bought a certain time of the royalties and done a lot of fun and amazing things that allowed them to have access to the royalty ecosystem without actually even having the artist involved. And that's what we did. We just bought the catalogs. And there's more catalogs that we're looking to buy from other publishers and other companies as well. Right, so Peter, it looks like you're itching to ask a question or chime in. <laughs> no, I, I'm just listening to what Noble has to say. I mean, he's got a phenomenal project that he's working on and you know, reinventing this stuff. I know that for myself as a kid, it's like, that's what I wanted to do is get royalties, right? I mean, who, who, how can you beat laying out by the pool and collecting royalties? So, but I don't have the talent to sing. So if I sang here, everybody would leave the show. So how do I do it? By getting involved with projects like Nobles, where I can participate in royalties without having to be a phenomenal singer. All right. So, so Noble, I'm going to jump to the question I think that's on everyone's mind is, how do I get me one of these? How do I, how do I buy one? Where's the exchange? How much okay, does it cost? Well, well, yeah. So, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's the simple answer is our pre-sale is done. Right. So we only had 3000 of these NFTs available. And so in our pre-sale, all the lower minted number NFTs have been swept up. Our number one, our number two and our number three are gone. And then some of the lower minted ones of the higher numbers, you know, from 1500 to 3000 are gone. But because it's a real small ecosystem of 3000, there are still about 800 NFTs you could buy that would only cost you one ETH per NFT. And we're telling people to start buying them because we're beginning our promotion for our exchange now. And uh, you can actually go to our, directly to bandroyalty.com. We built our own internal exchange for people to buy the NFTs directly from our website. So as mm -hmm. long as you have a MetaMask wallet you can, or a Trust wallet, you can connect directly from our website and buy one of our NFTs and uh, have it delivered in the next 24 hours. Uh, we've yeah. got a secondary market already on Rarible uh, where people are swapping them and selling them. And with our next kind of boost, we're in the middle of buying uh, two major catalogs. I can't really disclose it till you know it's all signed. Um, we're two major catalogs. We have a token coming out, and uh, we're working on our second series of NFTs because we said told people we were going to have a total of twelve thousand NFTs by the end of this. But our second series of NFTs are being built and created right now, and we've gone a completely different direction than the first time. So each one of these series is going to be unique. It's going to have artistic value and it'll have the opportunity to be staked if during lull periods like now, you want to be able to do something but not get rid of your NFT. Yeah. So I, I take it that you have competition that you that you're not alone in having discovered the beauty of NFTs in this space. We don't have competition. And so, no, realistically. We <laughs> All right, so, so, so that means we won't be airing this program because I don't want to divulge your secret. No, I don't, I'm happy. I want people, the, the, the industry has to change. There's no, for us, there's no loss for people understanding what we're doing. This is what crypto is about. I started out in computer programming when I was eight. I was programming Logos and Turtle on Apple II GS. And I grew up with a very much a hacker mentality that all information should be free and we should be sharing it and we should be interacting. And so we don't lose anything by other people sharing our ideas and emulating what we're doing. The goal is to open this up from the monolithic uh, monopolies that we've all been living under for such a long time. And mind you, I love Sony. You know, I want them to make as many Spider-Man movies as possible. But the reality is the musicians themselves, they toil under this laborious system that they make the music. And there's so many people cutting a slice of the pie between them and the distribution that the artists that we see, you know, driving fancy cars in their videos and looking glamorous and beautiful, that none of that was free. They paid for all of that, whether it was a rented car or whether it was the makeup artist, they paid for all of that. And just for their persona, 
they get peanuts and crumbs of the work that they produce. And it's not the best system. Uh, there have been worse systems, I'm sure, but we, there, we need some disruption. And so our goal at the end of the day is for people just to look at it, realize that their artists need to be supported by the fans. And the only way to do that is for those fans to participate in royalties, be a part of the royalty system, and just give artists an alternative from rushing to the majors to receive checks and then signing away their artistic works for the rest of their lives. Mm. So I, I don't regard myself as an expert in NFTs, but I've certainly have been following it. We witnessed um, a piece of art, a, a NFT sell for millions of dollars. Uh, we just witnessed uh, the sale of the first internet code being written in 1988, if memory serves, mm -hmm. being sold for millions of dollars. We're watching people like Tom Brady get into the market. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about where this goes uh, in terms of, you know, what, 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 where else can we create NFTs that, that people can make money from? So, so first of all, I think the idea of make money from may be like the lowest uh, opportunity here. The reality is that the idea of an NFT is just very simple. And then let's go back to what the blockchain is. It's just double entry bookkeeping. And it's the first time that we ever had double entry bookkeeping that was uh, verified, codified, and then publicly available amongst so many machines simultaneously so that it can never be undouble entried, right? So the idea is that there's a chain of custody that can go from A, B, C, and we can track it all the way through, to be honest, almost in perpetuity, forever. And so the question is, what is it that we're laboring under now that NFTs can actually supplant and change our lives in the most basic ways? I own my cars. I've got to go to the DMV and get a pink slip. Uh, if I lose it, I've got to fill out a form and it might take 30 days or 60 days. Imagine a world in which you just get your pink slip sent to you digitally as an NFT. And the moment you sell your car, you pass it to the next guy. It's not us trying to sign up for our AAA membership, not to have to deal with DMV lines in order to transfer cars and do our registration. It's all as an NFT. And so the practical applications are in numerous. And so it's great that people are doing works of art, people like me taking uh, uh, royalties and giving an opportunity for it. But the simple things like buying a home shouldn't require a hundred stacks of paper and then your mortgage broker calling you 20 times because he can't find the same paper that you faxed or emailed 50 times before. So that idea of being able to have title and ownership and then be able to directly see how chain of custody is, is phenomenal with NFT. So I love the fact that the artists are involved, musicians are involved, but the truth, the truth of the matter is in the next five years, the most mundane things will be just generalized NFTs and you'll have a wallet that you will manage your life in, that you will have your deed, your title, your life insurance, your, and it'll all be NFTs that are directed to you and be able to pass on easily to your family. That's really the beauty of the idea of NFTs. And what we're doing now is kind of playing with it and learning how to trust the concept in much the same way that it took people a decade to trust Bitcoin. And now Soros is investing. Jamie Dimon, who believed Bitcoin was a scam, all of a sudden, uh, two years ago, created Quorum and created their own blockchain and then invested in Bitcoin. So we're, we're in a phase where people are starting to really feel out what NFTs can be. And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to get hurt. And so my, my thought is not to really fixate only on the money making opportunities because those come and go. But the idea that the technology is not going to disappear. The cell phone showed up and it only got better. And so the NFTs that we're dealing with now will look like babies compared to the smart contracts and how it interacts and us being able to talk to AI with an NFT five years, 10 years from now. So there's things that are happening if you take a futurist approach that NFTs are really at the baby phase and in the infancy of their deployment. Hmm. I, I should mention that the founder of um, Rarible uh, believes that uh, uh, there's a boom coming, that it has unexpectedly gone mainstream was his quote. And and there's been a fresh round of $14 million of uh, fundraising going on to expand the uh, marketplace there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you follow that Absolutely. or not. Yeah. No, no, yeah, we're, we're from, definitely familiar with it. And that's why we decided to build our own exchange. But instead of leaving it open, we're just focusing in the music industry. Right. Yeah, I think a, a lot in this, you know, Bitcoin's been counted out a dozen times, right? Everything goes through these cycles where people count them out. But then you watch 0.72 is jumping into the marketplace, right? One of the biggest 
funds out there. Um, so, and I think that they like it to think that, oh, it's going away because it gives them a chance to position because the people out in the audience listening are going, oh no, that's over with, that's done. Oh, NFTs, I just saw an article that said NFTs are, are done right now, but they're just getting going. Financial NFTs, as Noble was talking about, I mean, these things are going to affect every way of our life instead of packaging. I mean, imagine packaging 20 assets into one NFT and being able to sell them out on the open marketplace for the value of what's inside that NFT and being able to do that easily instead of having to do 12 transactions. Imagine 10,000 transactions being packaged in one NFT and instantly being able to move that and transfer that. So the future is really bright for this stuff. Again, 12, 15 times they've counted Bitcoin out. Uh, the Chinese FUD has continued forever with it, right? Uh, I just saw an article that said Chinese miners are selling off their equipment cheap, GPUs. Come on, sell them off, right? Why? Because we'll move the mining into the United States where it'll be safer and more secure, right? Instead of in a communist nation. So yeah, it's, things are great right now. And uh I actually am one of the owners of Noble's NFT. So we do own one of them or two of them, a couple of them actually, as a, our group does. And we're excited about working with them and continuing to move things forward. So yeah. if you guys hear FUD out there that this is this is ending and that things are, that's just the people that are trying to position themselves, in my opinion, yeah. just trying Listen, to position I've been, themselves I've been so because they, they waited too long to get involved and they just want to keep you out of it. <laughs> hey, Peter, I've been trading for 30 years and- I look at, I've been reading tea leaves for a long time and seeing when things are overbought and oversold and seeing how the institutions move. And it's so funny. I was at the doctor yesterday, you know, and mind you, I'm, I'm an investor with True Badger as well. And I, I love the project, but Peter calls me up and says, Hey, Noble, you know, so I'm at the doctors and so talking to the doctor, he's like, Oh man, you know, Bitcoin is done. You know, it's, so it's down the toilet and, you know, and then NFTs. Oh my God. And I said, wait a minute. Bitcoin is over 30 something thousand. Two Christmases ago, we were excited that it was at 20,000. So even based on this, it is higher than its original all-time high that we all got excited about. So just because it's pulled back, he goes, no, but it's, it, it's over. I said, I said it was over when it was only $300. You know, I bought my first series of Bitcoins when it was 300 bucks and it went to $1,800. And I was like, oh man, Bitcoin's over. I was sold. I'm like, there's no way this digital currency I'm holding on to that nobody knows about is worth more than gold because I was a big gold bug. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, I've got to, I got it. I'm, I'm cashing out now while I'm smart. Man, that was the dumbest mistake I made. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people who felt the exact same way at different iterations Bitcoin 6,000, Bitcoin 8,000. And so uh, the reality is, Bitcoin's not going anywhere. And the governments uh, have to come up with a decision on how it works. But in the meantime, all of the institutionals have already decided that it's not going anywhere. Yeah. No, but, no, but what you don't understand money. is that your doctor's an advisor to Soros in point 72, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, who are you going to listen to, the doctor or, or what point 72 and Soros is doing? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'll take the other advice. <laughs> I'm going to take Soros. I'm going to Soros wins. So I look at this from a lot of perspectives, Robert, uh, you know, from an investor's perspective, from uh, in the trenches perspective, from a trader and a hedge fund operator for a lot of years. Um, I poo pooed it for a long time. And, uh, you know, yeah, now I, I just can't, it's unavoidable. You have to pay attention. Yeah. Peter, talk a little bit about the significance of point uh, 72 hiring a head of crypto. I mean, they're, they're the biggest out there, right? I mean, they manage other people's funds and they're not going to get into something. Um, I, I, somebody said a quote the other day. They said, because Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, they're all networks, right? And you're as strong as your network is. Well, now if you look at it with 0.72 and Soros are joining the network, right? All these billionaires, are they're not going to let something happen to that they're in. So as more and more of these people get involved, we become more secure as individual owners of it, right? Because again, point 72, they have lobbyists, they have attorneys, they have people that are going to say, hey, we're putting money into this. We need to protect it because it's our investor's money. Same thing with Soros. He's going to protect his family's fortune. How do they do that through their lobbyists and through all this stuff? So that's the exciting part about these guys getting involved with it is 
we become stronger as a network, as a community of holders of that asset. So that's why the future is so bright right now because of all the banks and all this stuff. Again, you know, this is, I guess, Bitcoin was created to change the system, but now the people that have the power in the system are joining along with Bitcoin. So I just think it gives it that longevity, the strength. Yep. It takes away a little of the fear of maybe what does it do tomorrow? What does it do next week? Yep. And for me, crypto is a long-term thing. I, you know, some people buy and sell it every single day and try to make some money. For me, it's find tokens and projects that you love, buy them and hold them three, five, 10 years down the road as the blockchain begins to develop. Mm -hmm. um, the blockchain is the, is the power behind it. Cryptocurrency is a representation of the power of the blockchain, right? The blockchain is what delivers the value to our lives that makes it to where I can own my, my medical records. Right now, I can say they're mine, but they're at a doctor's office that I've got to call somebody and say, hey, I need my medical records. Imagine having those readily available and you get to decide what they see, not what the doctor sends. I can say, I want them to see this x-ray or I want them to know this, mm -hmm. I want them to know this, where we can literally empower ourselves 100%. Uh, Noble had mentioned about people selling our data for years. Imagine being able to own and monetize your own data. Are you going to make millions off your data? Probably not, unless you're somebody famous. But what if you could make an extra few hundred dollars a year off of your own data and decide who buys it and who who gets to monetize that. Uh, the, the future of the blockchain is here to stay. Every major corporation out there is figuring out how to use it. So if blockchain is here to stay and crypto is the representation of blockchain, what's the, what, what's the outcome of that, right? One is, is the representation of the other one. So to me, there, this is a no brainer. Will we go through rocky times and will there be that day you look at your crypto and it's worth 80 grand and you know, a few days later, it might be worth 52. Yeah, but if you hold it, you stick with it, eventually that's gonna continue to go up as long as you're with good projects, good, not the thing your cousin texts you about and say, hey, check out this, you know, this meme coin, right? <laughs> but real projects that have business models behind them that are going to generate revenue like Noble's project, it's royalties. Those, th that music is going to continue to, to generate revenue on a monthly, daily, weekly, yearly basis for a long time, right? These are top songs where people are listening. They're using them in all kinds of different ways and means. Those are projects that have long-term revenue. Um, and that's what I look for in projects. What is the project? What's the problem it's going to solve? What's the value it's going to create for society? If you're doing that, just like with companies, you can end up doing very well in this space. Yeah. So I think about the, this stage in the world of crypto and blockchain a little bit like at the birth of the internet, where we watched a lot of companies come and then go. Um, today, I just noticed that uh, a, a company called Hive Blockchain is now trading on NASDAQ. Um, not to say that this is the next pets.com, but uh, we're going to see more of this, right? We're going to see more companies yeah. that are involved in the crypto space come to market, go public. Some yep. will survive, some won't. Yeah, I mean, well, we had early on uh, the tea company, right? Try and attach themselves to blockchain because they're publicly traded and immediately their stock went up. You know, there's going to be these Wild West events that are anomalies and we have to still put our smart hats on, right? And and be shrewd in how we approach all this. No matter how well you do, people continue to forget Apple was in the toilet at one point. They thought the company was gone. Uh, it was trading in single digits at one point and then dumped to double digits. And uh, they had to bring Steve back after they fired him. And now Apple's one of the strongest stocks in the world. Amazon, I. Uh, Nobody believed it was ever going to make money for 11 years straight. It was operating in the red. And now Bezos is one of the richest people in the world. So I just tell people to pay attention to, and Peter hit the nail on the head, to the long game and just pay attention to the fact that more and more companies have to integrate blockchain. It's not, it's not a option anymore. That the reality is their companies, in order to produce efficiency and to participate in the future world that we're functioning in, being able to use our phones for everything, the most simplest and most basic operations are being to be attached to smart contracts and NFTs. 
the, it, it, the smartphone is only going to get smarter. And the best way to make that smarter is to actually make Web 3.0, what we always talk about, smarter. And that gets smarter through blockchain, smart contracts, NFTs, and being able to instantly communicate and just show custody, show ownership. And that's just the direction. So Hive, whether it's you know pets.com or not, is just paving the way for a litany of companies that will host this Web 3.0 Wild West, just be around. And I don't think for a moment Coinbase is disappearing. Don't think for a moment that Binance is not gonna shake the shackles that it's under right now. Don't think for a moment that these major exchanges that have been given the green light for so long, XRP, which has been going through security issues and which is will come back, that they're going to disappear. These are some of our Apples or Amazons of the time because they're building infrastructure. Infrastructure is always going to lead the way no matter what. And those people are clever enough to build the software on top and create the smart contracts, NFTs that are functional and create value. All these things are going to feed into an ecosystem of structure. And nobody, you know, we live in America, nobody's going to steal the structure. And so pay attention to as many aggressive structure plays as possible. Um, I love, I'm a big fan of EOS. I'm a big fan of WAX because the structure makes sense. I'm a big fan of uh, XRP since, the, since inception. That, so there's a lot of uh, things that people have to look at. And it's great to play with the meme coins and it's great to look at what's happening in the news. Uh, Beeple, you know, I missed the opportunity to buy Beeple when he was super cheap. And then he goes to the Christie auction and he blows out as the largest living artist of, of our time, $69 million of equivalency. Uh, but there's going to be other Beeples and there's going to be other opportunities. And so there's no, by no means have we missed the boat. Yeah. So we, we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything that you haven't touched upon that you want to make mention of or anything that you've already mentioned that you want to reemphasize? So Noble, real quick, you had mentioned back that you're building a platform for new artists to be able to, this is really important because I know a lot of people watching this probably have kids that want to be in the music industry, or maybe they want to be in the music industry. Can you touch a little bit, buddy, on how you're going to help artists? Because that's the hardest thing. We work with five or six different artists, and it's hard for them to get going and get started. And so being able to create that NFT and get started with your platform. Can you cover that just real quick, a little bit more in depth on that? Yeah, I'll cover that. And I just have one other thing I wanted to bring up too. So the exchange itself will just allow musicians to meet their fans on equal footing. So the goal is to create a music NFT exchange, much like Rarible and OpenSea, that the fans know to go there and don't have to sift through a whole bunch of stuff. We're already day one are going to be delineated by genre, delineated by types and people will be able to find music that they can download as NFTs. Uh, but secondarily to that is that most artists have been caught up in, especially the ones who have fans. You know, we, we have, we're working with a young, young lady who has had 65 million views on TikTok, over 2.6 million people who uh, have, have followed her or linked to her on TikTok. Yet her income just doesn't reflect all of this social proof, right? Because one of the things of marketing is social proof is supposed to equate to money. And we look at her albums and her future opportunities for albums, and we say, look, why not curate it? Why not make albums that go for $50 or $100 as NFTs? And if you sell, I don't know, 200 of them a thousand, you know, to 1,000 of them, you're making anywhere from half a million to millions of dollars off of a handful of sales, as opposed to going to someplace like Spotify and giving away your music essentially for free. And, you know, Pharrell, he had something like 180 million, you know, plays of his song, and they only gave him a check for $6,000 by the end of it. I mean, you, you look at the disparity. And so the idea is for people to, particularly on our platform, to find a way to curate kind of a bespoke experience with their fans and to command a premium because the fans are willing to pay it. They're willing to pay hundreds of dollars to go to a concert, but yet the artist only gets a fraction of that to, to be a performer at the concert. So why not allow the fans to pay you what they want to pay you directly? And we believe the platform will allow that and make it just easy for people to use NFTs among multiple things that they need in their business. An NFT for the album, an NFT for part of the royalties, NFT is part of the merchandising program, an NFT for potential uh, utilization to go to their concerts. So our platform goal is to just give nascent and beginning artists 
access to fans who may like their genre, who may have never heard them, and then give them a way to find multiple aspects of monetization, utilizing NFTs and tokenization uh, to, to really push them. And so we just want to make it easy for them because right now everyone's coming to us directly, trying to get it, do it, do it for them. Now they've seen what we've done and we just want to make it easy where they can go and file the platform and do it on their own. And I guess the last thing I wanted to say is that Robinhood finally uh, revealed uh, what they're all about, right? So their most recent message was that 35% of its entire crypto revenue was based on the dog coin. You know, some people call it Doge, some people dog, but it just goes to show you that, you know, what's marketed to the youth isn't always the best thing that should be marketed. And Robinhood has done a great job of creating kind of a mini revolution for GameStop and uh, uh, the, the movie theater industry. AMC, but the yeah. reality is it's kind of played with our youth, our 18 to you know 30 set and given them a false idea of what quote unquote investing is versus speculation. And I think that um, the fact that 35% of all their crypto revenue is from the dog coin just shows that they, they, I'm not sure if their priorities are really aligned to see people be successful. Yeah, you know, I, I guess that brings to mind a question that I think about, which is because I have young children uh, and, and my goal is to make investors out of them as opposed to speculators, but the current environment is such that speculation becomes somewhat profitable um, to many, whether it's AMC or GameStop or Dogecoin. Yeah, you know, for me, my first book was called Futures for Small Speculators. So I don't have a problem with speculation. I just don't think that people nowadays know the difference really between investing and speculation. Speculation is part of everybody's portfolio to imagine what the future could look like and to be able to take advantage of the hype and the energy right now. That is not a bad thing unless that's all you're doing. And every time you're betting the farm on every you know, hype movement. And so game theory only can tell us that you're setting yourself up for catastrophic failure at some point. And it's unfortunate because again, why I'm a big fan of NFTs, no matter what, is these kids have grown up a life of renting. They've streamed their music. So they don't have music collections. They've streamed their, their, their video content through Netflix, Hulu. So they don't really have video collections. They don't buy cars. So they use Turo, Lyft, Uber, uh, all these services that they rent and SaaS models up the yin yang that have been chipping away at their paycheck every single month. Uh, you know, you, SaaS for Windows, SaaS for, I mean, like everything is now chipping away at their paycheck. So the question is, where do they build value in a world in which they, they own nothing and they are not encouraged to own anything? So I believe that for the most part, because, you know, I have a 24 year old son and a 22 year old son. I, you know, I, I try to explain to them that the goal, particularly now, is if you can, find as many opportunities to own what you can in this digital space because uh, your peers are stuck renting and they only know how to speculate because they, they, they just don't have a value of money, to be truthful. Yeah. Uh, Noble, tell our viewers how they can find you, what website to go to. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's easy. If you just want to have a chat or you want to work or figure out a way for us to collaborate, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I've, I've, I've been on LinkedIn since its inception, one of the best platforms personally that uh, you can kind of get real business done. Uh, so just type in my name, Noble Dracone. And, um, you know, if you can't uh, get a hold of me directly because most of my attachments are followers, I got about 30,000 followers there, uh, just email me or direct message me. Uh, and if you want to just learn about our project, visit bandroyalty.com uh, and you'll get a good idea and visit us on our Telegram. And if you just want to kind of DM me, I don't track it as much, but uh, Twitter, just my last name, Atricone. Uh, I've been on Twitter for ages, but I don't really use it that well. But you can ping me directly and uh, happy to talk to you. Well, uh, Peter Dracon, I, I've had a great time chatting with you, and I think our viewers will benefit greatly from watching this uh, our, our This Week in Crypto session. Uh, it's been really informative. Awesome. Thank you for having us, Robert. Yeah, thanks for having us, Robert. I appreciate it.